If you've played any strategy game over the past decade, you will probably be all too familiar with a hexagonal grid layout. In fact, hexagons aren't just confined to the virtual world of gaming, but are frequently used in our tabletop cousins too. Designers didn't just stumble upon these layouts by chance, and there are of course plenty of strategy games that default to a standard square grid, but in my personal experience hexagons are much more interesting to work with. Not only do they allow for an extra degree of movement, they snap nicely together, and I think you'll agree they are all around more satisfying to look at than a standard grid. The problem, however, is that modern engines and coordinate systems aren't really designed in a way that make hexagon layouts super approachable. So, there's some work to be done in Unity if you want to put together a hex-based game with hex-based placement, generation, and navigation. And of course, as hexagons are the best again, I figured that today we could take a look at how we can build and work with them. Hi there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide, and in today's video we're going to look at how we can procedurally create a hex mesh and then build and lay out a grid of them for a typical strategy game. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a little scene here with a basic camera controller set up. We can move, zoom in and out and rotate around. This code is based off of the one in the camera controller video from a few years ago, with some minor adaptations here and there to improve its handling and feel. I'll link the two reference videos below for more information. I want to use this scene as the base for a strategy game, and I want to replace this ground here with a map of hexagonal tiles. I could go and design a bunch of tiles in Blender or something, but while I'm prototyping I'd really like to be able to have some more control and test a few different ideas out, so a procedural approach will give me a lot more of that flexibility. So what we want to do then is to get Unity to draw a 3D hexagon mesh and lay out a whole bunch of them in the given order that we dictate. Let's start then by getting Unity to draw a single hexagon. Let's go ahead and create a new script which we'll call Hex Renderer. This script will contain the logic to draw and render a tile on the screen. We'll add a mesh filter and mesh renderer as a required component and make sure to fetch them during awake. As you know, a mesh in Unity is defined by a series of vertices and triangles, and we need to feed them into our mesh filter in a given order to define a shape properly. I've always found it annoying to keep track of every single vertex and triangle index when dealing with dynamic meshes, so instead I prefer to break my meshes up into faces, and then have our code combine all of those faces into all the info needed for the mesh to render. So at the top of our script, let's define a new struct called face. Essentially, we're going to use this as a container to map each face of our mesh, so we'll need to establish everything that our mesh renderer will use. Here, we'll have a list of vector 3s for our vertices, a list of integers for our triangles, and a list of vector 2s for our UVs. You can also choose to define the normals and additional mesh settings in here if you want, but for the purposes of this video, we'll stick to these three for now as they're the most important. With this now set up, we can start constructing the faces of our hexagon. Let's first start by drawing the top surface. We'll create a method called draw mesh and call it when our script is enabled. While I'm setting things up, I want to visualize things more easily by redrawing everything anytime a change is made in the inspector. So we'll also call our function inside the onValidate method. Redrawing things inside of onValidate will likely throw a bunch of warnings in the console, which is fine for now, but we'll need to make sure to comment this part out once we're happy with things to keep Unity in a good mood. So I'm gonna break this process up into a few steps. The first step will be to define our faces. So let's create a list of faces in our class and a method called draw faces, which we'll come back to in a moment. The second step will be to combine the faces into our final mesh with the combine faces method. This is the most straightforward part, so we can fill this in pretty fast. We'll create an array for each of our three mesh elements. Then we'll loop through all of our faces and add the vertices and UVs into the arrays we've just created. We'll also loop through our triangles, but add an offset based on the current face index. Then all we need to do is designate those into our mesh. If we look in Unity, we should now have a mesh being drawn, but as we haven't created any faces yet, there's nothing for our renderer to actually show on screen. Let's go back into our script and set up our first face. We'll start by initializing a list of faces. For easier UV mapping, the top and bottom sides are going to be made up of six unique faces. Now let's write a little helper method to define how we're actually going to create a face. I want to be able to scale and adjust both an inner and outer radius for our hex shape. So in this method, we'll pass in two floats for both of those. We'll also pass in two height variables, which will come in useful when defining the sides. 
We'll pass in an integer to define the current point index, which will help when connecting up our triangles, and finally a boolean for flipping everything around, which helps when we're mirroring faces. This will all make sense shortly, just bear with me. Before doing anything else, we also need to write another helper method that will allow us to calculate the position of a vertex in our shape really easily using fun trigonometry. We'll create a method called getPoint, which takes a size, height, and index value. As you know, there are six sides to a hexagon, and the total of any angle within a shape will have to add up to 360 degrees, which means that each of our internal angles in our hexagon are 60 degrees wide. So we'll calculate the total amount of degrees around our shape by multiplying our index value by 60. We'll then need to convert those to radians, which we'll do by dividing pi by 180 and multiplying in our angle. Then we just return a vector with the x point being the cosine of our radians multiplied by its radius, y just being our height, and then z being the sine value of our radians multiplied by its radius. Now we have a method we can use to easily calculate the position of our points. We then just need to add these to their arrays and return the face. In our draw faces method, now all we need to do is pass in our inner radius, outer radius, heights, and point index. Back in Unity, we now have a 2D hexagon shape that we can manipulate. Hooray! Also, let's suppose that you wanted to support either flat topped or pointy topped hexagonal shapes. Well, we can simply pass in a boolean to our getPoint method and subtract 30 degrees from the resulting value. For those of you just looking to define a 2D hex, this might be enough, but I want my hexes to be three-dimensional, so the next step is to render the bottom and sides of this hex. Let's make the bottom face first. This is pretty easy, we just need to do the exact same thing again, but this time flip the vertex order so our face is drawn in the other direction. And now, as we adjust the height value, the top and bottom of our mesh move further apart from one another. To get the sides on, we basically just match the middle of both of our previous loops here. The first will draw the outer faces, and then this second loop will draw our inner faces. Now we have a fully procedural hex that we can play around with in the inspector. One of my favorite things about drawing meshes procedurally like this is that with just a few controls in the inspector, we can get some awesomely varied results. If we invert the radius or height, we end up with an inverted hex, which, you know, I'm not sure why you'd want a hexagonal room like this, but hey, it's possible. Okay, so we have our hex, but it's kind of useless on its own. What we really want is a whole grid of hexes. Unfortunately, we can't just lay them out like we would a standard cell grid. Hexagons slot into each other a bit more delicately and require a different treatment to be laid out in a grid. So let's create a brand new script called Hex Grid Layout. In here, we'll add the various settings from our previous script as the grid will now handle generating our individual hexes. We'll also add a vector to int property to define the size of our grid. We'll do the same thing as before, adding both an onEnable and onValidate method, and then call a layoutGrid method that will handle generating our hex cells. In here, we'll iterate through our grid size property and create a new hex game object, adding our hex renderer component and corresponding settings. We'll also add it as a child to our grid transform. Now, all we need to do is define the position of our hex based on a given cell coordinate. Let's create a new method called getPositionForHex from coordinate and pass in our coordinate. In here, we're going to use some math to calculate the offsetting of our tiles, so we'll need to define its current row and column position. The calculations will differ slightly depending on whether or not we're working with pointy top hexes or flat top hexes, so we'll have to filter for the orientation as well. For pointy top tiles, we'll determine if we're going to need to offset the tile by using a modulo operator on the current row. We'll then calculate the width of our hex by multiplying its radius by the square root of 3, and the height of the tile is just double its radius. Based on these numbers, we can calculate the distances we need to offset our tiles relative to one another. Our horizontal distance is just the width, but our vertical distance is 3 quarters of our height. Then, we'll also calculate whether or not we should be offsetting our tile, and if we should, the offset is just half of our width. With that, we can now define our X position based on the current column, and our Z position based on the current row. I want my tiles to lay out from the top left, so we'll return an inverse of the Z position in our vector here. If we look in Unity, we should now see that with our pointy top settings, our tiles lay out accordingly. Let's not forget about our flat top friends though. For this orientation, we calculate our offset based on our column, 
We swap the width and height calculations around and our horizontal distance is three quarters of our width and our vertical distance is just our height. Our offset is half of our height and we subtract that from our Z position instead. With this setup, we now have a perfect grid with completely procedural hexes in both orientations of our tiles. As you can see, it's easy to manage and create meshes like this in code. And while this is a great starting point for any strategy game prototype, there's obviously a lot more we need to do before getting to something more functional. Hopefully, however, this video alone gives you a good jumping off point for just generating procedural geometry or laying out hex tiles in a grid. In a future video, we'll take a look at how we can continue our work here to build out a proper prototype for a strategy game, including navigating a character around the grid with hex-based pathfinding, and a fog of war that reveals radially around our character as they navigate the grid. So be sure to stay tuned to the channel for that one. In the meantime, if you want more information on working with hexes, check out this awesome write-up on hexagonal grids by Red Blob Games. It's the main source of inspiration for this video and a great reference point for further reading. I'll link the page down below if you want to take a look. Additionally, if you want to check out this project for yourself and delve into it at your own pace, the full source code will be available over on the Patreon for anybody subscribed to the Unity package tier or above. Link in the description below for that too. Anyway, that's all for today. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if this has sparked your interest in creating a procedural mesh in your project. If you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing to be notified when new videos go live, or if you would like to see more videos from me first, consider checking out the suggested video on screen now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again next time.